Welcome to our latest author live chat brought to you by NetGalley, Booktrib, and Merrill Moss Media. We're very excited to continue our NetGalley author series today with Marcus Sakey, author of the acclaimed Brilliance Trilogy. The trilogy is receiving rave reviews from the likes of fellow authors Gillian Flynn, Blake Crouch, and Michael Connolly. The third and final book, Written in Fire, is out today. So happy Pub Day, Marcus, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Welcome to my living room. <laughs> thank you for having us. Uh, so Marcus Sakey's thrillers have been nominated for more than 15 awards, uh, named New York Times Editor's Picks, and selected among Esquire Magazine's top five books of the year. Marcus was also the host and writer of the acclaimed television show Hidden City on Travel Channel. Uh, and his previous novel, Good People, was made into a movie starring James Franco and Kate Hudson. And Brilliance is currently in development with Legendary Pictures. Very exciting stuff. So, Marcus, before we begin our questions, can you bring us up to speed on your latest Written in Fire um, for those who might not know exactly what's going on? Sure. Well, the uh, first of all, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um, the, the Brilliance trilogy is based on the idea of an alternate present where about 1980, 1% of people in the world started being born with exceptional gifts. Mm -hmm. um, no superpowers, nobody can fly, no uh, claws popping through their hands. Um, it's more ways of viewing the world. They're sort right. of akin to savants. Mm -hmm. And the problem is that when 1% of the world is just objectively better than the other 99, what happens to the rest of us. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the trilogy is one epic story, um, beginning with brilliance. The whole story takes place in less than a year, and uh, Written in Fire is the culmination of it. It's, uh, it's my Return of the Jedi without Ewoks. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so what's the most exciting part of publishing a new book for you? Is it pub day? Is it the hype that comes before release day? Because I know a lot of authors say, oh, I don't know, once the book comes out, it's like, it's kind of a sad day, all the hype is gone. What do you think is the best part? No, it's not a sad day at all. It's it's kind of a strange thing yeah, with, the, sure. with the business is that um, I'm my head is in my next book. You know, I'm, I'm 100 pages into the next book and uh, you live very deeply in the book you're writing. Mm -hmm. And so it's actually kind of, it's fun for me apart from, I'm always glad to hear other people are enjoying it, yeah. but it's, I get to touch base with these old friends that I haven't seen in a while. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's, I'm, I'm loving it. Mm -hmm. Plus, my wife takes me out to lunch, and uh, that's always a win. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, when did your journey as a published writer start? Can you bring us back to the first book? Sure. Um, well, I think, like many authors, I've wanted to be a writer as far back as I can remember. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I was five, other kids wanted to be rock stars and astronauts, and I right. wanted to write books. So it's I'm very literally living my dream, um, which is a happy yeah. place to be. Fantastic. Uh, that said, I, I knew I always wanted to do it. It was always a plan, but um, it's a, it is a journey. You know, I wrote uh, just abysmal fiction in high school and terrible fiction in college and then wretched fiction shortly thereafter. And uh, it, it hit me that uh, it really needed, I needed to go out and live a life, you know, have, have some experiences. Um, that wanting to write is not the same as having anything to say. Right. So I did that and after about 10-ish uh, years, working in corporations and getting married and owning a house and you know all those kinds of things um, uh -huh. i uh, i was working in advertising and it was a good job in a lot of ways it's a lot of smart people it's interesting challenges um but you just burn out on it and yeah. so i was going in every day trying to think of reasons not to set the building on fire uh, <laughs> I, uh, my wife suggested that perhaps it would be better to chase the dream I always had in mind, which was yeah. writing a book. Mm -hmm. So I went in, uh, this is a true story, I went in to tell my boss um, that I was quitting and I opened my mouth and before I could get a word in, he said, Marcus, I'm sorry, we're going to have to let you go. <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, when does that happen? That's perfect. <laughs> Picking the pants from the universe. Yeah. So, uh, I, 
spent probably a year uh, really learning how to write a book, mm -hmm. um, getting my hands dirty and writing short stories and breaking down books I loved, which yep. absolutely ruins them for ever loving them again. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, then I wrote my first novel, which was The Blade Itself. So that was, that was the first novel that I, that I ever wrote, and it was uh, sold at auction and published in 2007. Wow. What a story. So what's kind of the longest, because you said it took you about a year to actually, you know, you had the idea kicking around, but to actually, like, sit down and write the book. What's the longest you've ever had an idea kicking around for a book? I'm sure there's always something in there that hasn't come out yet. Yeah, it depends how what you mean by the idea. You know, there are scraps and pieces that have wow. been kicking around in my head since I was that five-year-old. Yeah. Um, but they're a long way from being books. Yes. Uh, that's one of the things you have to learn when you when you yeah. try to write is that you you have to take all of those and acknowledge that they're like that much yeah. of you know of a whole book. Mm -hmm. uh, so the notion for brilliance had pieces of it had been kicking around in my head for four or five years. The book that I'm working on now, pieces of it have been kicking around for ten years. Wow. Um, but it's very different when you actually sit down and try to attack it mm -hmm. and beat it into a structural shape. Mm -hmm. um, now, for this particular trilogy, um, was there anything out there that inspired you that kind of helped you come up with the ideas for this? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, my wife, when I was just starting to think about what my next book would be, she was in the process of getting her master's degree yeah. in uh, child development. Yeah. And as part of that, she was yeah. spending a lot of time learning about uh, autism and Asperger's and the, the spectrum. Yeah. And she was fascinated by it. I was fascinated hearing about it. And the way authors' brains work is anytime you're talking to an author, if our eyes kind of go, uh, it means that we took something you said and are imagining a book with it and, and aren't listening to you anymore. Yep. Um, and that was sort of, that was a big part of the genesis as she was talking about the way that people on the spectrum, the way that their brains just actually function mm -hmm. differently and the percentages of them. And then that got me thinking, well, what if the one or so percent of people born on the spectrum yeah. We're born instead uh, with, in, with really enhanced abilities, with things that were objectively better mm -hmm. than the rest of us. And then what if that didn't come with any costs? It was just an attribute, like being tall or short or, right. you know, blonde. Um, and that, that was the seed, that was the germ of the idea, because to me, what was fascinating was less the people with amazing abilities and more how the rest of us gonna cope. have to react to that. Yeah, absolutely. How we're going to cope. Yeah. Um, so are you... Um, oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, so that was, that, was the, that was the germ of the idea, and I wanted to write it. I fell in love with it right away, but I just I didn't know if it was something that that fit. I've been writing what were pretty straightforward uh, crime thrillers till mm -hmm. then, and this is speculative fiction with a right. you know a, a smattering of sci-fi. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I actually went, I, I'm, a lot of my friends are writers also, and I went uh, mountain climbing with my buddy Blake, Blake yeah. Crouch, uh, and he was in a similar place. He was yeah. toying with uh, what would become Wayward Pines, mm -hmm. um, which is an incredible trilogy that yep. you all should read. Mm -hmm. um, or watch. Just watch it. One of the best yeah. shows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, um, so we were climbing and uh, sort of reminded each other that if it was firing us, firing us up that much, uh, that that would probably carry other people. All right. So you kind of made a pact to go for it. Nice to have yeah, fun. and thankfully it worked because otherwise we'd be living in each other's garages and it would be <laughs> awkward. <laughs> Camping out. Now, um, I know you've done some really interesting research for your books. You're really hands-on. Can you talk a little bit more about what you've done? Yeah, the research is, is the real reason I want to write books because it's basically an excuse to do cool shit. Yeah. Um, I, uh, the the historical vision of research for a book is sitting in a library, pouring through dusty tomes, and no I love libraries, but that that isn't what turns me on. Yeah. Um, 
the stuff I love to do is is experiential. So it's it's just a very different thing to imagine what it's like to you know to be a cop and to train with a SWAT team. You know, to repel with a SWAT team or view an autopsy or hold a human brain or dive for pirate treasure or be pepper sprayed. Um, all of which are things I've done yeah. uh, ostensibly in the name of research. Mm -hmm. um, now, they're, they're mostly all amazing fun. Being pepper sprayed kind of sucked. <laughs> How many times has that happened? More than once? Just the once. Ooh, just just the nice. once. Um, <laughs> it was it was plenty. Yeah, the guy who got me. It was uh, we actually used it in in the show that I hosted in yeah. Hidden City. Um, and the guy who got me trained cops and security personnel on, on getting hit with pepper spray, so he was not gentle. Um, just nailed me right, right across there. both eyes. Oh my gosh. How do you even deal with that once it happens to you? Like, I can't even imagine functioning through that. That's intense. There wasn't a lot of functioning. Um, <laughs> when it first Middle hit, position. it surprised me. And yeah, I sort of I rocked back and I closed my eyes and there were there were about four seconds where it was not bad and I was just like, I am the toughest guy on the planet. I'm so strong. And then the burning started and the I, weeping and the <laughs> snot pouring. And, oh. uh, it was it was not pretty. It was probably twenty minutes um, and they were actively sort of trying to decontaminate me. It's a process. It's a very technical process of rubbing dish soap on your face um, <laughs> for 20 minutes before I wow. can open my eyes. Oof. That's rough. <laughs> now, going back to just how this whole trilogy, you know, came about, are you a plotter? Did you sit down and say, I'm going to write a trilogy or did it just kind of happen that way? Was it all planned out? No, that was part of the fun. Was I... <laughs> the the basic arc of the thing um, and it was just really important to me Same to time, tell oh, one nice. epic story yeah. to tell one epic story across these three books yeah. so uh, there are plenty of series that I read and I enjoy them but for me the notion of just coming back into someone's new adventures isn't it's just not very exciting to me as a writer yeah. But telling one story that spans all of this, where the decisions made in the first book literally shape what happens in the third book, that just turned me on. Uh, so I set out, and I, the, you know, I made the Star Wars joke, but honestly, like an entire generation, I was raised on that practically as a religion, uh, yeah. and uh, yep. it helped to think about it that yeah. way. And I was thinking, oh, well, this is my empire. Okay, yeah. sweet, I can do mm -hmm. that. Absolutely. Um, now, what do you feel is your job or perhaps your duty to your readers as a storyteller? Is there something that you set out to do for them? Yeah, yeah, very definitely. To me, um, the sweetest, the sweet spot of writing and, and reading also um, is a book that you can't put down that keeps you up too late or makes you miss your train stop. Yeah. Uh, and then hopefully has enough ideas that those you find yourself thinking of it a week later, or it uh, just kind of reframes the way you think about something that you had always taken for granted. Uh, it's I, I feel very strongly that our job is first to entertain. Yeah. Uh, I just think that entertaining can also be the best way to express an idea. It's you know the the books and movies that have changed my perception on things first had me absolutely rooted, exactly. and then they made me see the other mm -hmm. sides. And give you a book hangover for days. I always love it. Ideally, yeah. <laughs> Kink. It's all, yeah, so it's kind of a niche, yeah. right? Yeah, definitely. You, you get a book hangover like that, every other book looks a little sad, you know, you're not sure what's, <laughs> what next will do. <laughs> Got to reread it or find something that's going to be riveting. Um, and people obviously think that your books are immensely entertaining. Um, your book, Good People, was made into a movie. So what was it like watching that on the big screen? I'm, I'm assuming you watched it. <laughs> I did. I, I did watch it, um, me and a few, two or three other people. Um, yeah, I, it was very strange watching it on the screen. It was stranger still watching them film part of it. Oh, yeah. um, they, shot, uh, they shot in London. There's uh, huge tax credits, I guess, for filming in the UK. Mm -hmm. And so we, my wife and I flew over and uh, 
watched them shoot a couple of scenes, and there was a moment when I'm just I'm sitting in a chair watching 150 people work really hard to recreate a moment from my book when what was so surreal was I kept thinking like I just made this up. Yeah, you know, it's it didn't have any authority. You know, I didn't discover something and present it as I was like, I just made this up. But I'm really glad that you guys are digging it. Awesome. And brilliance is also in development too, which is awesome. Yeah, brilliance is in development. Most of my books have been optioned at one point or another. Um, Hollywood's a very yeah. strange place. Yes. So you just yes. you you pick people that you think we'll do a good job with it that seem to really love the material and you cross your yeah, fingers. Absolutely. Um, do you have a lot of creative involvement? Is it like, you know, down to every little detail or do you kind of like let them go with it or? Uh, no, generally, generally not. Um, yeah. There's not one answer to that. There are right. sometimes on rare occasions, authors write the screenplays yeah. uh, for the books that become movies. Gillian Flynn just did that with with Gone Girl, obviously, um, and she murdered it. It was it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. But usually, it's kind of separate. Maybe you get to weigh in and give some creative notes, mm -hmm. um, but you're not usually deeply involved. It's a it's a collaborative process, and it's a different media. Yeah. Uh, so it, I think that's fair. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have two questions from Connor that I wanted to send through. Thanks, Connor, for for asking these. Um, he says, "Are there any?" Hi, Connor. Are there any sci-fi shows out today that you absolutely love? I'm sure. There are sci-fi shows that I absolutely love. There's nothing out right now that I'm that I'm deeply hooked on. Yeah. Um, but right yeah. this second, my laptop is actually propped on the box set of Battlestar Galactica, mm -hmm. uh, just to raise it up. So um, that was incredible. Uh, I, I'm sure if Connor asked that question, I'm going to guess he's seen it. But if you haven't, Connor, go, go. Uh, I've seen Firefly, yes. you know, 200 times. Um, I, I love good science fiction. Yeah. It's such, it hits that balance I'm talking about. You know, it's got room for characters and adventure and ideas and can just thrill me. Mm -hmm. Ask Connor if he's got anything that he thinks I should watch. <laughs> Connor, are you out there? <laughs> He also wants to know yeah, what inspired you to write science fiction focused novels. Like, what made you kind of jump to that from what you were previously writing? It's a field that I've always loved. Um, it was a kind of a nervy decision to me to go from something that was uh, traditional crime thrillers into something that was a little more speculative. Okay. But it's also the place I always wanted to go. Yeah. Um, it's it's more what I read. It's more what fires me up. Uh, and I tell you, I'm never going back. Um, the you know whether or not you call it sci-fi, for me, for the stuff I like to write, it's um, I don't know that I'd necessarily call it science fiction because I think that means different things to different people, and there are some people for whom they would they would not fit that at all. Um, but it's it's speculative and it's about ideas and those ideas frame it and that's what I always loved about science fiction. Your inner nerd pulled you there. And he's never coming back. My my inner nerd is my outer nerd. <laughs> that's I'm, true. I'm, I'm, Wear it proudly. I'm a nerd all the way. Yeah. Here's a uh, a random question I thought of. I thought it was interesting. If you had to wear a T-shirt with one slogan on it for the rest of your life, what would it be and why? <laughs> Uh, well, probably my my favorite piece of personal advice is um, ask forgiveness, not permission. Brilliant. Uh, but if I put that on a T-shirt, I think I'd be advi advertising to people that I was going to do that. Uh, I don't know. Drink good beer. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. I, what? Who could argue with that? You have to be careful what you choose. <laughs> you really do. Um. Now, when it comes to reading books, do you prefer reading in the same genre that you're you're writing in, or do you like to throw in a little bit of everything? Do you like to avoid reading the same read, genre or everything? No, I read broadly. I read, I'm always baffled. You hear authors ask sometimes, uh, and they'll say they don't read while they're writing, which I I don't understand. I, yeah. It's my job. Mm -hmm. I'm writing all the time, um, and I'm always, always, always reading. Right. Uh, so. No, I don't. Uh, I don't 
tie myself to a specific genre and I don't limit it when I'm writing it. In fact, sometimes I, sometimes you use it. I mean, it's never to exactly. never to plagiarize, at least not so anyone catches you. Um, but it's if you're about to write an action scene, reading Lee Child helps. Yeah. Reminds you, you know, how it can be. If you're doing dialogue, watch some Aaron Sorkin or read some some Elmore Leonard. And these things just help remind you of what it can be, exactly. give you something to aspire to. Yeah. Um, are there any new reads in 2016 that you're dying to get your hands on? Anything that comes to the top of your mind? That I'm dying to get my hands on? Yeah, um, the uh, the final book in Pierce Brown's trilogy comes okay. out, uh, Morningstar comes out in February, Excellent. which I'm, I'm dying to see. Yeah. Uh, first two were Red Rising and Golden Sun, and they were pretty stellar. How about um, new films? That's, um, oh, I feel like I'm still in a hangover from the end of uh, 2015. They've released so many good films in the last two weeks. <laughs> they really did. Um, I've got to catch The Revenant now, apparently. Yep. Uh, is it winning? Yep, absolutely. Um, That's my goal for the weekend, is The Revenant. Um, is The Revenant? Oh, yeah, Absolutely. Well, I think that they like picked out, I mean, they had other authors try out, I heard, and they just couldn't deal with the uh, conditions outside. I find that crazy. He got, it seems pretty intense. Leo got through it. It seems pretty intense. <laughs> yeah, you know, he's really, uh, he's really turned into something, man. I mean, everybody who used to yeah. just make Titanic jokes yeah, has exactly. got to be eating a lot of crow. That's he's what I'm saying. he's like, freaking good. Yeah. Um, are there any characters in the Brilliance trilogy that you'd love to bring back for future books? Or is there any, you know, like, you know, secondary characters that you think would come back? You know, it's, I, I genuinely love most of the characters here, even the ones that are complete shit heels. <laughs> um, you know, I'm, it's, I tend to, if I'm writing a book, I'm with these people for a year, mm -hmm. so I need to care about them and get them and uh, feel kind of personally invested in them. So that's always true, but with brilliance especially. Yeah. I mean, writing you know, writing these people was so much fun, writing Cooper in particular. Yeah. Um, whether or not I would bring them back, I, I don't really have any plans yeah. to. I'm not, uh, I'm not saying that it won't happen, yeah. um, but I wanted to tell this story yeah. beginning to end, and I feel like I did. I feel like everybody got their got their moments. Oh, absolutely. Um, now, can you tell us a little bit more about your experience writing and hosting Hidden City? Because we know you from that as well. So, what was that like? Yeah, that was uh, <laughs> that was also surreal. I'd I'd never held any aspirations towards television, or at least not not being in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I had worked at Turner Broadcasting earlier in my career as an animator, as a, a 3D animator. And while I was there, I met a guy who since has gone out to form a very successful production company mm -hmm. uh, called Crazy Legs. Nice. And he saw what I was doing and reached out to me and with the, this idea for a show. Uh, and my first thought was, uh, sure, crazy person. Uh, <laughs> that will never happen. But he's... Yeah. Next thing you know, I'm getting pepper sprayed in a garage on, in a <laughs> suburb of Chicago. So it was it was a really interesting, intense experience. I loved doing it. The people I got to meet were incredible. Uh, I mean, everybody from cops who had been there on the biggest cases of their day to yeah. in interviewing yeah. convicted murderesses in a maximum security prison. Wow. Um, the people I was working with were incredible. And... We really got a chance to make the show we wanted to make, which was very exciting. Right. Uh, that said, you know, we did 12 episodes of it. Uh, I found out my wife was pregnant. We found out she was pregnant uh, while I was shooting the first one. And wow. <laughs> it's a lot of time on the road. Um, so it was an amazing experience. But one of the great things about being an author is that uh, I can do my job without pants on. Yeah. And... That's hard to do on TV. Oh, yeah, absolutely. While being sprayed in the face with pepper spray. <laughs> that's yeah. yeah <laughs> that's a that's a two for you. You did some right. Did you do some writing for that show too? Right. I wrote everything. Oh, okay. So yeah, I, I. Was that a weird transition going from TV writing to to book writing to? 
or not really? It was. I, the good thing is that that show, it really is very much my voice. Yeah. Um, and that helps because I am not an actor. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have phenomenal um, admiration for the people who can do that, but yeah. I'm not one of them. Uh, yeah. I can't even really tell a joke. Uh, oh, please. So for me... Yeah. The way I needed it needed to be something that was me, yeah. that I was comfortable saying the words. Um, so it worked, it worked pretty well. I was, there were a lot of bits in the show where I would say things like, here's what I'm thinking about right this moment. Exactly. And that's, Natural. that's what I was thinking yeah. about right that moment. Um, are you attending any writers' conferences, any events in the near future that we should know about? Um, I don't have anything lined up. Uh, right this second, but it's, I used to go to Bashkan every year, yeah. and uh, I haven't for the last few since my daughter was born. So I think I might uh, go back to it this year. I love doing it. It's it's so much fun. Uh, yeah, absolutely. If any of you are watching and haven't been going to a writers conference, whether you want to write or just you know love books, mm -hmm. so much fun. Yeah. Everybody's in the bar. Nobody is snooty. You can walk up to your favorite author and just say, Hey, I love your books. Can I buy you a beer? Yeah. And I promise you, we will say yes. Yeah, we do. We, we attend a lot of conferences here, and that is the overall vibe. It is a friendly, fun atmosphere. Amazing. Um, a couple more questions. So if you were a punctuation mark, what punctuation mark would best, <laughs> would best describe your personality? <laughs> That's another one of my gems. That's a good one, yeah. Uh, if I was a punctuation mark. Um, I've always been partial to the semicolon. Uh, I, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think it's a much maligned piece of punctuation. I like the semicolon. I like the M dash. This thought leading into that thought, Absolutely. nesting them. Yes. Uh, I like it. Um, now, what are you working on next? I know you you mentioned briefly before what you're working on next, but just for anyone who just tuned in and would like to know. What's in yeah, well, I'm, I'm in the early stages. Well, I'm 100 pages in to my next book. Uh, I can't I can't really get into details on right. it. It's too uh, it's too unformed at the moment. Um, but I know it and I am crazy excited about it. It's another uh, speculative fiction uh -huh. piece. Uh, big ideas, big world, big stakes. Uh, I, I had so much fun writing the Brilliance yeah. Trilogy, being able to uh, explore and put reasons to the whole world, yeah. you know, to take major questions and uh, put them in the crucible of car chases and knife fights. Yeah. And that's that's what I'm, that's what fired me up about the Brilliance Trilogy, and that's what I'll be doing from now Fantastic. on. Fantastic. Now, before we say goodbye, is there any advice you have for someone looking to publish their work? Yeah, I mean... Uh, there's a lot of advice out there, and you should read all of it, um, and you have to parse it and find the things that work for you. But the biggest piece of advice that I would give always um, is button, chair, fingers on keyboard. <laughs> and that's that's how you write a book. You don't. There's no waiting for the muse. There's yeah. no getting caught down the rabbit hole of research. Um, there's no conceptualizing it for years and never typing it, it, those things are all fine. But if you want to write a book, you put your butt in a chair and you put your fingers on the keyboard. That's your t-shirt slogan. Button, chair, fingers on keyboard. Button, chair, and fingers on keyboard. Drink a beer on the back and you're good. You're good to go. Perfect. <laughs> well, thank you so much again for joining us today, Marcus, and to all our viewers for tuning in and asking questions. And it's been great. Thank you all. Thank you. It was Thanks great everybody. fun. Thank yeah. you, guys. Yeah. Take care, guys.